Hi folks, welcome to Let's Get Cooking. I'm your host, Charles Minnick. So what do you say? Let's get cooking. All right, what's in the menu tonight? Well, tonight we're going to do a pan seared pork medallion dish. So we've got some really nice fresh pork here. And we're gonna accompany that with some caramelized onions, some blanched asparagus. We're gonna season it with some fresh oregano, touch of fresh parsley, and the other ingredients that we're going to need tonight is going to be an egg wash. What I have here is about three egg whites and a half a cup of ranch dressing, some brown sugar, touch of butter, some salt, some pepper, some olive oil, some panko breadcrumbs, which I'll explain what those are later. A little bit of red wine. We're going to use a Cabernet tonight, which we'll be using in the onions. And also, as I always say, cook with the libation, cook with what you want to drink. So that's what we have. Now, first off, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to get our medallions breaded. So as we learned last week, we take our flour in a bag, just like shake and bake. Now I get about a cup and a half, two cups of flour. I've already pre-seasoned it with the pepper and the salt. So, here we go. All you're going to do is take your pork medallions, put them right in here. Give them a little shake. This is what you'll refer to or see in cookbooks and TV shows as dredging. We are dredging it in the flour. Think of the flour as paint primer. The primer sticks to the wood, the paint sticks to the primer. And if you are the astute student of cooking, that I know you all are, you're saying, gee, Charles, if the flour's the primer, the egg wash must be the paint. And you're correct, but we're gonna get to that a little bit later. So let's just put that aside. Now, first thing we're going to do is we're going to work on our onions because that will actually take the longest. We're going to caramelize these. Now, on this show, we're only going to do about a serving or two of onions. So we're going to take our onions and let's learn how to cut them. We're going to cut the end off right here. And then we're going to cut the other end off. Now, notice how I'm cutting. I'm not putting my fingers here and holding it because that's going to make you chop off your fingertips. I'm also, I don't hold my knife there. You hold your knife here at the end of the blade. You cup under your fingers so they look like that. And you just slice. Voila. Now, we're going to take the onion. We're going to very carefully just cut through the top layer or two of skin because we want to save as much onion as possible. And we peel it back. Voila. See how little skin I took off of the onion? Toss that aside. Cut that in half. Put that aside because we're doing about a serving or two. So we're using what we just learned. Putting cupping our fingers under. You can even use your knuckles right here, the flat part, use it as a guide. And you're going to go straight down. Again, straight down. Cut right through. Voila. Cut that one in half. This one's already cut in half. Now, we don't really have to go for looks on this because we're going to be reducing these for a long time and it's going to get fragrant. By a long time, I mean at least 10 or 15 minutes. But, you know, you're making the meal. It's like anything. You do want it to look good as much as possible because what do you eat with first? As we learned last week, you eat with your eyes first. If it looks like poo, your brain's going to think it's going to taste like poo. So, nobody wants to eat poo. Again, I'm using the fingers 
and the butt, that flat part, and I'm holding the knife right there. Now this one, I'm going to cut that up a little bit more. So we'll take these, put those right over there. Now, now see we need a little bit of butter. We are going to come over here to our pan. Drop that in there. Going to use our red wine. Going to put about a cup in there. And we're actually going to set the top of that, the uh, top burner here, to about medium high to medium. I mean medium high to high. We will then get ready with our brown sugar. But what we're going to do now is we're going to take these onions. Just going to break them up a little bit. If you've noticed, I didn't quite cut off the end as far as I wanted to. So just a little quick cut off to the side. Boom. It's in there. And we just break these up and we put them in there. Now when I say caramelize the onions, what we're doing is we are getting these really, really cooked. We're going to take all this wine and this butter. It's going to make them really translucent. It's going to colorize them. And we get a little onion tear there. Not that I feel sorry for these guys, but these are just your basic yellow onions. Very inexpensive at the store. They do make you tear up now and then. Okay, now let's see what we need to do with our wine. I'm going to give that a little stir. All right, that's heating up nicely. Now we need a little more wine. Actually, we need a lot more wine in there. If I was using a flatter pan like this, we may need a little bit less because they'd be spread out more. But we have limited pans and we have limited space here on GTV. Well, let's get cooking. So we'll let those get going for a little bit. You know what? I'm going to put that up on high. Give my hands a quick wipe. There we go. Make sure that bird is working. Yep, it's going to be working. So while that's heating up, we are going to take a little bit of our brown sugar. And this is what's going to be do the bleh, this is what's going to do the caramelizing. The sugar. Because all caramelizing is pretty much burning sugar. Now, I got about three tablespoons of brown sugar. You can use white sugar. You can use the brown sugar. It's all what you want to use. My wife made some apple crisp last week, so we have a brand new bag of brown sugar. So that's what I used. Got it in the house. Not going to go out and get a lot of white sugar if I don't need to, because all you're doing is sweetening this up. If you don't have sugar, you can use maple syrup. You could use grape juice. All you need is something sweet and sugary. So let's let that sit for a moment. And we're going to go back over here. We're going to look at our medallions. What we're going to do with these now is we are going to actually get the oil heated for these. So. We have about three tablespoons of oil right there. Gonna get this heated up. Gonna put that on medium. Because we don't want to get too, too hot. Because it will splatter everywhere. So while that oil, while that oil is heating up, and this burner is heating up as well to get those boiling for a few minutes, those onions. We're going to do our egg wash. Now, as I told you, we have ranch dressing with about three egg whites. And we're going to use the panko breadcrumbs. The reason we're going to be using the panko breadcrumbs is panko breadcrumbs are bigger fluffier and lighter than your regular Italian seasoned breadcrumbs. 
And the reason this is important for us to use is because we're not baking these, we're not roasting these. We're actually putting these in oil and we're pan searing those. And the panko breadcrumbs do not absorb as much oil. So if we use regular breadcrumbs, it's going to taste heavier and denser and just not as good. So this gives it a lighter, crispier um, taste. Think of a tempura battered shrimp or a tempura battered chicken Japanese cooking. That's what they use. This is actually a Japanese breadcrumb. Um, sometimes you'll see it referred to as the snowflake breadcrumb. But we call them pankos because that's what we call them. So we've got our pork medallions already dredged. And the thing about the pork medallions too, you can buy them pre-cut like this. You may pay $350, $399 a pound. Or if you're smart, oh, it's starting to bubble over there. Sounds good. If you're smart, you will buy a pork tenderloin, either a thinner uh, loin or a bigger shoulder roast. And what you do is you just cut off these tenderloins however thick you want them. If you're going to pan sear them, I suggest like I did, I went just under a quarter inch because they're going to cook quicker, much quicker. You don't want to be pan searing something that's, you know, three inches thick. You'll be pan searing it all day. It's going to absorb a lot of that oil. If you're grilling or roasting it in the oven, you may want to get something that thick. Um, but fortunately, we don't have an oven. We just have the four burners here at GTV. Now, oh, let's take a look at these. They're boiling nicely. Here we go. All right, give those a quick stir. All right, so here comes the messy part, folks. I know I say use a bag for your flour, which you should do, but there's nothing easy about an egg wash. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this, and here we go. We're going to pour these out. You could use a bag for your bread crumbing, although I don't recommend it because you want to, sometimes you'll get clumps in there, you want to get it nice and even with this. So here we go. We are going to take this. Just get a little coating. Boom. And we're just going to turn it a few times. Going to press those crumbs into it. Voila. We'll do the next one. Get it in there. Mm, I can smell the ranch from here. No, you can use any kind of ranch dressing you want. The Moolahs, Market Basket, Shaw's, Hidden Valley. Mm -mm -mm. Now, one thing I did that I did not bring here is I seasoned the breadcrumbs with a touch of ginger. And that's only because, for whatever reason, I think of pork, I think of ginger. And I always season my pork with ginger. And as I said on our first show, when we made the chicken piccata, you make the dish your own. You could, you could take this pork, you could season it with ginger, Worcestershire sauce, soy sauce, whatever you wanted. All right, so here we go. Remember, we have the primer which is the flour. Then we have the paint, which is the egg wash. I don't know what you want to call the panko breadcrumbs, except yummy, crunchy goodness. Here we go. Now, the breadcrumbs that we're dipped in, do not save these. What you just did is you dip these in raw food. So those are done. If you are too cheap to throw away breadcrumbs, you are too cheap, period. So let's give the work area a quick wipe. I'm a big proponent of cleaning as you cook. So is my wife, because rule in our house is whoever cooks, 
sits in front of the TV while the other one does dishes. And in case you haven't guessed, I cook. Hence the name of our production company, Mommy Can't Cook. Cute little story, a couple of weeks ago, my wife was making something in the kitchen. God bless her, she was trying really hard. She was a really good, good idea. But one of my sons, Henry, said, Mommy, what are you doing? And she said, I'm making dinner. And he said, but that's daddy's job. And the ensuing conversation was, cooking is men's work. Because <laughs> that's just the way it is in our house. All right, we're going to turn this burner down for a little bit because it's uh, onions are going to take a little longer than I expected. And we want to get these nice and reduced. I should have started those a little earlier, I think. And we don't want our pan, our oil, to burn. There's nothing worse than burnt oil. You want to preheat your pans. You don't want to burn them because that oil will form a film. Not good. So what we'll do now is we will blanch the asparagus. Now the asparagus, nice little, nice little vegetable. I love it. I think that uh, you either love asparagus or you hate it. Uh, basic asparagus spears. You always want to cut the ends off when you get them. I've already done that because they get more fibrous and chewy and rooty as you go down. These are about, you know, six inches, four, four to six inches. Good length for an asparagus. Now the ends, don't throw them out. You can freeze those. You can cook them longer to break down all the fibers. And you can use them in anything, salads, even like canned asparagus, nice and mushy. Some people say, oh, it's gross, it's mushy. No, it's not. You mush that asparagus up, add that to your rice, add that to your salad. Add it to anything, and you've got a nice, inexpensive asparagus taste. So we're going to blanch these, just a little bit of hot water. These will not take too long to cook because I bought them frozen. And in case you didn't know, when you freeze something and then you thaw it out as a vegetable, it gets limp, doesn't take as long to cook. Okay. These onions are cooking right along here. Just end up probably another few minutes on those and then we will start the pork. Now in the meantime, I always say cook with libation. We have a Cabernet tonight. It's a drier red wine, as you know. Um, as I've told you before, apart from making this dish your own with ginger, whatever else you want to add to the pork, cook with the wine you want to drink. Now, don't make your onion, your caramelized onions with, with a white wine, not going to taste the same. So use a red wine. Do not buy red cooking wine because it will taste like red vinegar and we don't cook with red vinegar for this dish. But if you like a white wine, by all means, drink it with the pork. I like a red wine. I'm using it for the caramelized onions and I prefer a Cabernet. I'm not a Merlot guy. I'm more of a Cabernet or a Zinfandel guy. Nice and dry. Dry wines, that's what I love and that's what I'm going to cook with. All right folks, so now we get that cooking right along. We got these sitting here. We're going to let these sit for just a few moments and let them absorb some of that ranch egg wash because this has a lot of flavor. Now, as I said, you normally might want to bake this in the oven or roast it, but we don't have that here. And you may not always be somewhere where you have something you can roast. This is actually a dish. You can take these, you could get these prepared ahead of time, you could freeze them, and then you can take them camping with you. Put them in the cooler, they thaw out, you could grill these puppies up till the tomorrow, and guess what? You'll be the popular camp cook. I mean, who says you have to go camping with burgers and dogs and just regular steak? Nothing wrong with that. Love a good steak, but you have burgers and dogs any day of the week. So we have this going on. 
Let's take a look over here. Oh, these are cooking nicely. See what I said? These onions right here. Nice, you're getting a nice red color. These are actually taking the longest to cook. Everything else is going to take minutes compared to this. So, what I will do is I will take this. I'm going to move this to the back burner because you've all seen this. Now, as I said, we get regular yellow onions. You can use Valdalia onions. You can use red onions. You can use whatever onion you want. Onions have different flavors for the different styles of onions. Valdalia is a little sweeter. The yellow's a little more pungent, makes you cry, makes you get all sniffly. And I do it because I love cooking, not because of the onions. And that's the truth. All right, so we'll get this preheated back up here in the front. And we will drop those in momentarily. While we're getting that oven preheated, I mentioned this oregano. Nice, fresh oregano. I actually picked this oregano Saturday, which depending on when this airs, um, it was the 21st, Saturday the 21st, as well as this parsley. I was up in, outside of North Conway, very small town called Albany at my sister-in-law's new house, and she had this in her garden. Do you know what it was? Because they just moved to that house recently. A little onion straggler there. And I said, no, no, Valerie, you've got some nice parsley, and you got some beautiful oregano. So, of course, I stole most of it, and I actually stole a few shoots because I brought those home, and I grow herbs year-round. I get a little bit of thyme, now I have oregano, now I have parsley, and I have basil. And I suggest you do the same because there's nothing like going to a little plant, they don't take up much room either, you know, and you take that little sprig off and you've got, mmm, delicious. If you guys had Smellotron, woo, you could smell this. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to put a little bit in there, look at that, it's bubbling up nicely. That also tells me that's about ready to receive the pork. So, here we have our pork. Oh, hear that? Yeah! Now, what I think we'll do is we'll do this in two stages because the pan not quite big enough, but there you go. It's bubbling up nicely. I'm going to cook that up probably two minutes aside. As I mentioned before, we cut this small and thin so it cooks quickly. Now, we don't have to worry about it burning because we're going to be here watching it. Here we have the onions. We probably reduce these by half right now. They're getting really, really fragrant over here. Again, you guys need Smellotron, Smellovision. They have 3D TVs. Now we need Smell D TVs because you could really, really get hungry if you could smell this. I'm going to add the rest of our brown sugar. Remember, I had about three or four tablespoons. You can make this as sweet as you want or as unsweet as you want. It's up to you. Make it your own, I say. And if you're a fan of the show, you know I say that a lot. Make it your own. Now, another thing you can do, too, for the caramelized onions, add a little bit of balsamic vinegar. That's a very, very sweet vinegar. It gives it another depth of flavor. All right, what do we have going on here? Look at that. Oh, nice and golden brown. Look at that. Huh? Look at that. Looks like my burner's a little hot on the back side. So I'll just move those. Also, the oil is pooling up towards the back of the pan. Um, just the way the floor is in here, not quite level. 
And you know what though? You're going to find that in your own house as well. So, we'll let those sides cook. Look at that though. That piece right there, this piece, nice and golden. Get that other side going. When those are done, we're going to take a little bit more of our oil and we'll do the other two pieces. Give that a stir. Gosh, this smells wonderful. And the good thing about the caramelized onions, folks, you can't overcook them. You can't. So long as you keep adding a little bit of wine, a little bit of vinegar, even a little bit of water, you can't burn them. Now, folks, while all this is cooking, let's just recap what we've done so far. We've dredged, meaning we got everything in the flour. We pre-season the flour with salt and pepper. Do as much or a little salt and pepper as you want. We cut the onions. We learned all about the using this part of your knuckle and boom. And we'll do more cutting exercises later on in other shows. We've learned about buying meat. Buy the loin, cut it up yourself. Medallions, much cheaper that way. Like what I didn't use for those medallions, I just put in my freezer. And I will probably take those medallions. Oh, these are cooking up nicely. Or not the medallions, rather, but the rest of that loin. And I will probably do a stuffed pork loin a couple of weeks. We got the panko breadcrumbs. As we know, the panko breadcrumbs are lighter because they're bigger. The oil is not absorbed in them as readily as a regular breadcrumb. So when you're pan searing something, it's going to taste much better, less like oil. It'll taste healthier. If it is healthier, I don't know, but it'll taste healthier anyway. Okay, look at these. Hmm, looking good. All right, what we're going to do now, though, is we're going to take these off because these are done. We're going to add a little bit more oil. Another probably another two tablespoons. You're going to let that oil heat up. We still have, as you can see, our oregano and our parsley. Thank you, sister-in-law Val, or as my kids say, Auntie Val, because that is some good stuff right there. Give these a quick stir. As you can see, these are getting really, really soft and mushy. Now, I like my caramelized onions almost black. They're so mushy, it's like a paste. But a lot of people don't. So we are not going, we're not going to reduce them that much. Oh, look at that. You know what? It's a little skinny right there. Get rid of that. All right. We got the oil back in business. There we go. Little swirl around. You know, I got a little bit of butter left in the spoon. I'm just going to put that in here. Uh, I don't know if we can get a close-up, close-up on this, but in here, this is getting to be almost like syrup. So what that means is we're getting all the moisture out. The only thing left are the solids of sugars, the sugars that are in the wine, the sugars that are in the onions, which are getting really translucent right now. And, of course, the sugar that's in the brown sugar. All right. Now, 
Can I get ready to flip these? I think we're doing okay for time. Ooh, look at that. Look at that. That is lovely. Mm. All right, while those are cooking, I'm gonna start plating some things up. So, I've got my magical plate because everything this plate touches tastes like magic. Now guys, and I mean girls and guys, this is where the presentation comes in, okay? Gonna put these, and I'll hold this up in a second just to show you what I'm doing. Okay, right here, what we have is we have the asparagus fanned out. This is the first layer of our plate. Now, if you're having a dinner party, you can do this with the dinner party, okay? I never have a dinner party with more than six people, only because I like to serve it this way. I don't like to have a dinner party and do a lot of family style, pass, you know, pass the bowl of potatoes around. Thanksgiving dinner. Perfect example of that. I like to say, here is your plate that I made special for you, and it's a heck of a lot easier when you only have six people because you can be in your kitchen and come out with three plates at a time. Here you go, guys. And the ooh-ah factor is incredible. They love it because, you know, you got friends coming over. They're going to be drinking at, a at your house, but they're getting served like a restaurant. They love it, and they will think that you are a good cook, even if you're not, because it looks good. Maybe that's my success <laughs> with cooking. I just look good doing it. All right. Oh, we got a little bit of burning right here. Oh, oh, oh. Going to flip that. And there we go. We are almost ready, guys. Almost ready. Woo -hoo -hoo. Look at that. We're cooking here now. Okay. All right. I think these are just about done for the caramelized onions. Let's move over here to our plating area. Now, the caramelized onions. I made about two servings, which is about two medium onions. And I say two servings because people love these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plate these about three quarters of the way down the asparagus spears. Because right now we are building our plate. We got the nice contrast of the colors here of the asparagus and all that deep burgundy from the one burnt sugar because that is caramelized and you're burning the sugar, but you're not burning it so much that it tastes like burnt. And yes, tastes like burnt is a flavor. I just made it up. And it's my cooking show, so I can say it's a flavor. All right, there we go. Now, we're going to take our pork medallions. We're going to take those. Again, get a nice transition of color. Look at that. Oh. And I'll flip these over here. There we go. Those are looking good. All right. Now, we're going to take a few more of the caramelized onions. Yeah, <laughs> caramelized onions. It's awfully dry back here, folks. Which is why I say cook with libation, but I really can't cook with libation on a Access TV show. Now, here you are. We have the finished product of, let me just move everything off, because those medallions are done over there. That's right there. Awesome, folks, here we are. Pork medallions on a bed of caramelized onions and asparagus spears. You serve this to your significant other they are going to be ooing, eyeing over you the next day at work, saying, wow, 
Look what he, she, or it made. It's awesome. Look at this. Now, you could garnish this with a little sprinkling of Parmesan cheese, just to give a little bit of color. And you could use anything, uh, anything for a garnish, but maybe something white, give it a little bit of pop. But here we go, guys. Looks good, doesn't it? All right, so now comes the moment. The taste test. Now, my producer Dave, wife told me he's got to start trying other things, which is why he volunteered for this show. He liked the chicken piccata last week, but it says a little tangy for him. So I'm hoping. Mmm. Wow. That has crunch. It's got this explosion of, sh of everything that we put into it. It's hard to describe until you taste it. So I encourage you, try this recipe. If you want to know exact measurements, email me. My e email address is mchm411 at comcast.net. And producer Dave is going to put that up on the screen for you so you don't, remember, so you don't forget it. You'll remember that. Um, if you want me to cook anything for you, let me know. We can do it on the show. Mmm. Wow, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Not quite there yet. Hold on. I love caramelized onions. That is great. My wife says I have to make more of this at home. Caramelized onions, that is. Now, with these caramelized onions, you can freeze these. You can thaw them out again. You know, don't freeze them forever, but you know what? Wait two weeks. Freeze them for two weeks. Make a pizza at home, caramelized onions. Steak topping, caramelized onions. Your sandwiches at work getting boring, caramelized onions. Use it on anything. Mmm, but that is good. But yes, getting back to what I was saying, I, I'll make anything. If you have an idea, email me. I will make it on the show for you. Realize we have four burners, no stove. Once we get a stove, we can do a lot more here. Or I can do the TV, hey, let's put it in the oven, ding, 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 hey, look what we have. It's been two minutes, but it takes an hour to cook. We can do that as well. You can even come on my show, and I can show you right here, standing next to me, how to cook something. Then you can go home, wow your family with it. Even if you need to know how to make a bologna and cheese sandwich, we can teach you. Mm. You know what? I need one more bite because before Dave digs into this, although I made extras, but I'll need that as well. Mm. Folks, again, pork medallions, panko breadcrumbs, talking with my mouthful, pan seared with caramelized onions and asparagus spears. Incredible. Tune in next week. Don't know what we're making yet. I decide that on Sundays. We tape on Mondays. So, We'll find out, but definitely tune in next week, and we will make something else delicious. All right? Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. And also, don't forget your cooking libation. Bye, folks.